Can everyone hear me all right in the back? Yeah, I'll take it as yes. So, hello, yep, yeah, thanks for the intro. My name's Matthew Oxen. Uh, I'm a data scientist, whatever that is, uh, from the Government Digital Service. And I'm wa willing to wager I'm probably the only civil servant here today, so I will give you a little bit of an introduction about what the Government Digital Service is. But essentially what I'm talking about today is reproducible analysis for government. And having been a researcher before working for government, I've been basically trying to bring a lot of those reproducible research principles to government to improve the way that we produce our official statistics, amongst other things. So what is GDS? What is the Government Digital Service? Uh, so the official line is this. We're here to make it easy for government to be digital. Uh, so if you've interacted with government in any way recently, like um, pay for your car tax, claim benefit, uh, bought a fishing licence, anything like that, you probably went through, or you will have gone through Gov.uk, which is the government's main portal. So we're responsible for that, and we're responsible for trying to make uh, a lot of paper-based processes in government more digital and easier to use. Um, so there's a, bl a blog post there. If you're really interested and in, in want to know more, please do check it out. Um, I'm actually in what's called the Better Use of Data team, so we have a split role. We're partly there to increase data science capability across government, and the other part of our work is to actually do project work. So that would be trying to apply some sort of data science, machine learning techniques to problems that government might have. But I'm not really talking about any of that. Um, so Government have produces a lot of statistics. It's really hard to put a number on how many official statistical publications there are. It's probably around a thousand, or well, between a thousand and ten thousand. We don't know. There's, there's just loads of them, and we're worried about reproducibility because when we get it wrong, it really counts. So it's not the case that we get a publication wrong and we need to uh, retract something. It's like we get a publication wrong and politicians make a bad decision because of us. So it's, kind of, it's quite important that we get those numbers right. And we saw a lot of interesting stuff around TensorFlow and um, deep learning, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not talking about anything sexy, anything HPC. I'm really talking about sums and means, but they're really important sums and means. So just to give you a little bit of an example of um, the, the kind of publications that we publish, I try to pick three kind of random ones. So we publish, I say we, Government Digital Service doesn't publish. This gets published by, maybe you can see it, the Marine Management Organisation. So they have statisticians there who will be publishing their statistics about fisheries. You see, get ones about the war in Afghanistan. So this is about aerial ordnance, how many bombs we dropped. That's produced by the Ministry of Defence. And you might get ones about the school workforce. So this is around how many teachers there are, how many physics teachers there are, where they work, all that kind of stuff. I bring this one up because I actually worked on this publication. When I first came into government, I worked for the um, Department for Education, and unfortunately I got put on this publication for about six months. And that sort of freaked me out a bit because I was like, well, this is 18 pages long. This shouldn't take six months to produce. And that's kind of where this whole uh, bit of work came from. So yeah, it's a, yeah, I'll leave it leave that there. <laughs> so the process of producing statistics in government, we have a lot of statisticians and a lot of analysts and they vary in terms of their background. Some of them are, you know, have done postdocs, some of them have got PhDs, some of them have got masters, but many of them are, um, <laughs> I almost said something derogatory there, many of them uh, don't have that sort of background and they are kind of churning the statistical handle in a very semi manual or manual process. And it kind of looks a bit like this. Um, so often, well, always, data will come from some sort of data store, whether that's an Excel spreadsheet or a Hadoop cluster or anything in between, and it will have some sort of manipulation in a statistical software like SAS or SPSS or whatever, and then it will end up in a spreadsheet probably to make the tables look nice, and then from there it will end up in a, a word processor, which you probably guess which one, uh, and finally it will get converted into a PDF because that's a really nice open format, and then we go and publish that on gov.uk. Except it's a lot more complicated than that because these things are never done by one person, they're always done by several people. So you might have one person doing one figure and one person doing one table and it all gets really complicated really quickly. And every time you see an arrow, it's probably copy and paste. It might be a direct export import, but probably it's copy and paste. So the sort of propensity for errors is relatively high. Um, and 
In fact, it's more complicated than that as well, because we kind of have, we're really worried about making sure that these statistics are right. So we have this QA process, which I guess is a little bit like peer review, um, except that, well, in that it ha all happens at the end of the process. So you might go through this whole sort of process of producing a publication, and then someone says, oh, wait a minute, there's a problem in table four, and then you go back right the way to the beginning. And people pretty much reproduce the whole publication again and again until we're satisfied that we're there and it's okay, we can publish it. So that's the thing. Uh, and we have been pushing this idea of reproducible analytical pipelines. So we would just say reproducible research, except we can't say research. So this is kind of what we came up with. Um, and the, the basic premise behind this is can't we just use software development practices to make this a bit better? Like, can, can we not uh, make this more reproducible, reduce the amount of errors, even if we just remove all that copy and pasting? You know, we would make this a little bit better. So what we've been doing at GDS is kind of working in a sort of consultative way where we've been going out to some departments and we started with the Department for Culture, Media and Sport and they were really keen to uh, let us help them. So we've been improving some of the publications they have and that's basically what I'm going to talk about. Um, the other real benefit, aside from the reproducibility and the reduction in errors, is transparency. So if our processes are all manual, semi-manual, and someone says, well, you know, how did you, how did you get that figure? You know, we've based a policy on that. How did you decide that was the right number? Well, it can be quite hard, difficult to track back those numbers. And so from our point of view, whilst there's a, there's a cost saving to be had in terms of reducing the amount of time it takes to produce these things and reducing the amount of uh, freedom of information requests we have. Because if we make this a completely uh, free and open process, which is on GitHub uh, or wherever, um, then we can just point people to the code and say that's exactly how we, did, we produce this number. So I guess when we're sort of thinking about these things, it's very interesting that someone put these three things up already and, and a few more things as well which I'll probably steal at some point but um, we kind of think in these three terms reproducibility of the data with software applied to that data in a given environment probably missing some things but that's kind of broadly where we start from and so the way we're kind of trying to work on this is well, the, the data problem is actually really really sticky it's really hard for us to solve because I could be a, an analyst in department A but actually my data comes from department B so it's hard for us to kind of have a really joined up approach for dealing with you know, versioning data and ensuring quality of data. So I'll talk about that a little bit, but I'm not going to say too much because it's a much thornier problem for 20 minutes. Um, in terms of the software, we're sort of trying to get to a world where we're writing what tend to be R packages. So where we have a publication, instead of it being a load of manual processes, we instead write an R package and have essentially one function per thing, whether it's a table or a plot or whatever. And then, of course, there's the environment. Um, and the environment is kind of tricky for us. I'll show you the reasons why, but I'll come on to that later on. So Docker images may be uh, a way that we can help deal with that environment problem. So I said data is a little bit difficult. We're working on it. <laughs> one of the ways we're working on it is by these things called registers. So it turned out that... Uh, before registers, no one knew what countries there were <laughs> in government. So it sounds weird, right? But everybody had a list. You know, the Foreign, Wealth and, uh, Foreign Commonwealth and Office had a list. The Department for Education had a list. The Ministry of Defence had a list. And none of those lists matched up. They all had different numbers of countries, and they had different ways of referring to different countries. And that sounds like a, a silly problem, right? But actually, countries change their names quite often. So, for example, the Czech Republic became Czechia very recently. Uh, so that's something that we need to reflect in our lists. And if you've got multiple lists being managed by multiple people, then often that's a problem. So the idea behind registers is that actually we have like a common list for the whole of government, which is cryptographically controlled, so we can uh, manage our changes and track our changes back on it. Seems really common sense, but no one had built it before. So that's one way we're trying to solve this problem. Um, but this only deals with kind of really common data sets like lists of countries or uh, lists of reportable... Veter uh, veterinary, veter veterinary diseases uh, and that kind of stuff. It doesn't really deal with the actual core data that, that we would be using to build our publications. But I'll, I'll leave that one for now because it's, it's a difficult one for us to solve. So in terms of the software, I guess our first problem is actually this, uh, dealing with this problem. Where, when we go to departments and we're like, okay, so are you using version control? And they say, yes. And we say, no, I don't think you are. So 
Our first step is to try and get people to use version control. Uh, and even if people just use version control and did nothing else, then I think we'd be in a whole much better, but better place. But actually, we're sort of trying to go a step further. Uh, and so really, as I, as I mentioned, what we're aiming to do is build an R package or a Python module for every publication or every group of publications. So we have that sort of generic, those generic functions in place that we can then test and we can document and do all those good sort of software practices instead of having that, uh, that semi-manual manual process. And here's an example of that. So this is our first one, a prototype that I've stuck on GitHub. Um, so do, do feel free to have a look, it's not particularly interesting, but it does produce um, some statistics and it basically reduces the production time of a particular publication for the Department of Cultural Media and Sport by about 75% of the time. So that's a great saving for us. It's also a great saving for you because that's 75% less taxpayer money going into the production of some pretty easy statistics. Um, and this is what I mentioned before. So the idea is that we, we build classes, we build functions, we make it sort of proper software. This isn't scripts. And that's kind of something we have to work with our partners and other government departments to sort of move away from. Often when they think of coding, they think of like a long list of instructions in, a, in one particular file. And we're like, mm, you know, there are better ways of doing this and that's software. So let's try and move towards that. And this is the way we've been doing it so far. We build classes for each data model and then one function for every particular thing or group of things if we can use arguments to deal with those um, different cases. And it's all built properly, so we use continuous integration, we test it on Windows, we test it on Linux, we test it on Mac, uh, we use code coverage, we version it. Uh, so it becomes very easy for us to say, okay, what was the version, what was the 2016 version like? And what was the 2015 version like? All becomes very, very easy and saves us a lot of time. And getting onto the Docker stuff, so while we're all here. Um, so this is a little bit aspirational. We're not really there yet uh, because this is quite a new project. We're just sort of trying to get it off the ground, and it has just been me for quite a long time, but now I've got about four or five other people in government also doing this kind of stuff. So perhaps where we want to get to is having a single image for every publication or group of publications. And aside from the kind of obvious dependency management stuff, um, the other re the real reason why we might want to do this is because government departments are quite restrictive with their IT. So if you go to um, somewhere like the Department for Education, they might have R, I'm mainly talking about using R here, um, they might have R 3.1 or 2 point something, I don't know. You go to another department, they've got a different version. And it's not a simple case that you can just say, oh, the latest version's out, can you update? There's normally like a bureaucratic process you have to go through to get them to update. So actually, if I want to run their version of their publication, I need to be able to roll back three or four versions of R to actually be able to do it, sometimes. So that provides a really nice solution for us. And I'm very keen to, if anyone, like it's been really interesting so far to hear people's thoughts about reproducibility and Docker and some potential issues that they, there might be around that. But for the moment, this is where I've kind of rested on. Um, and we've produced one. So there is a, one single Docker image out there which helps produce that publication which I showed you before. Um, it may not work, but there we go. Uh, <laughs> hopefully it will. So do, if you have any thoughts on that, please do grab me and suggest them to me because I'm very, very keen to, uh, to take them on board. But of course, this is fine for people like me who want to actually build these publications uh, and who have the technical skills to do it. But of course, you're not going to give a citizen a Docker container because they probably won't know really what to do with it. So we're always going to still need the PDFs, which is fine. But as long as we can reproduce those PDFs in a really nice, reproducible way, no problem. So in terms of where we are now, I'm getting towards the end of my 15 minutes. So um, as I said, this has just been me sort of on this crusade after having a difficult experience of uh, producing one publication. We now have three government departments who are kind of invested with us on, on, on this journey. So the Department for Transport, the Ministry of Justice, the uh, Department for Education, and also the Department for Cultural Media and Sports, that's four. Um, so this year we're hoping to actually push this out and, and start to get reproducibility in government to be more of an actual thing that people recognise and is supported and is just standard practice for when we're trying to produce statistics. That's all I've got really, so if anyone's got any questions. <laughs>